fucking beautiful. Ah, oh, man, you guys. I got so many questions about what you just did. Wow. <laughs> We're happy to have you here. Yeah, man, it is my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. So Tim really introduced me to your playing, and how did you? Yeah, I don't know how I found you. It was like one of those late night searches. And, oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and you popped up on Instagram or uh, something, and I went, whoa. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Huge Instagram presence. Yeah. And and a yeah. really really fast and big growing uh, YouTube yeah. presence as well. And your videos get a lot of views, and it's just because I, it's totally organically. It's just so damn musical what you do and that's like translating I think oh. really well yeah and it never really it's 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 all the kind of music I love which is kind of R&B and rock and folk and soul <laughs> it, it, your virtuosity is kind of in the realm of music that's kind of my favorite so well yeah I have this thing where I mean when I put on your videos I get like just sucked in and I kind of well I actually I don't even think of the genre or anything I'm just thinking about that yeah. I just get sucked into the music and just yeah. listen as though I was listening to you know like a yeah like there's a, there's a similar similar effect for me when I listen to Hendrix or Beck or any of those great fantastic guitar players yeah. that we all you know but you really have that going on so well, um yeah Appreciate it. That means a lot, especially coming from you guys. How long have you lived here in LA? So I've been living here since 2013. So it's been three years and a couple of months. And from Brazil, eh? Came yes, Brazil. born and raised in Brazil. So I've got this like uh, thing about Brazil and guitar players. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> it's, like, it's just incredible. Well, no, it's, seriously, it's some yeah, of the, right. you know, yeah. I don't know what's yeah. in the water down there, but it's like, uh, you know, it's it's, uh, it's the samba. Yeah, who's your friend that you mentioned earlier? Uh, Andre. Yeah, right. Andre Nieri. Right, right. He's, He's fantastic. Like, yeah. Great guy. Yeah. And like his playing is unbelievable. He has this technique with because he, I think he graduated. Like his grade was like classical, mm. like acoustic guitar. Right. So he has this thing, man, with his right hand uh -huh. that is like unbelievable. It's like, dude, what is what is that? You know, like it sounds crazy and uh, unique technique. Yeah, yeah, it's like I would say that you know it has this this unique vibe that it's really cool. Well, your right hand is pretty uh, ferocious too. Do you use a pick ever? Yes, I mean. Yeah, some, I've been, this is actually a, a, an interesting point because sometimes I, I go only like, you know, no picks, mm -hmm. but, uh, and sometimes I, I do like a mix, you know, I'm right. like this right. and yeah. then I, I grab the pick, you yeah. know. Do you I, consciously I, think about it when you switch? Or no, just... that's, so that's what happened, like it was mm. something totally natural, mm. you know, I was like, you know, like, let me just like groove or, you know those rhythm things and then I was like you know what I should add a little bit of soloing right so this is actually like the beginning of the whole idea of my Instagram videos you know I was okay. like I was like, it's nice to have the rhythm but at the same time people want to I mean at least my following they want to hear what I you know my, my solo stuff too you know, sure like my, yeah my lead stuff. Yeah, so do we. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So you kind of came up with a chord melody style almost of like with your playing right with your fingers primarily it seems like on a lot of the YouTube videos. I see you can kind of solo in. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and but I mean, all of this started actually. This is an interesting thing. I was, you know, I, I forgot to mention this, but I, but I, the reason why I moved to LA was to study music mm. in Musicians Institute. Right. It's just, yeah, and um, so anyway, uh, this was like in the middle of the, in the middle of the of 2013, and I was like, man, I sh I should start recording more videos, you know, and upload this on the social media, YouTube or whatever. And back then, I didn't have a, like a software, like a, like a virtual drums, you know what I'm saying? Okay. To do like a rhythm thing to me. Right. So I was like, you know what, I think I should try something just with the guitar itself. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. You know, wow. so this yeah. is how everything, you know, started. Kind of out of necessity. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah totally. Or totally. limitations. Totally, yeah, exactly, yeah. because it, I didn't have like 
money, you know, like that student student life, you don't have money. So Well you travel so between that's... lead playing and fills and rhythm pretty effortlessly. And it's great to watch. I always you know, I play lead, but there has to be something under my leads. Yeah. For every right. guitar, you know, lead guitar is an yeah, ensemble man. instrument. It's meant to be played with a bass player or a drummer or yes. a guitar player. Exactly. Yeah. So for you to actually sit there and do it by yourself, that it's great. And you're always you're always doing little little moves. Even with what we just mm -hmm. did, you didn't. You're always doing little inversions that are constantly changing, and and yeah. the colors are shifting. And <laughs> it's really great. Uh, so if you're playing, like, I don't want to put you on the spot, but like if you're playing over that by yourself. How would you develop something like that? If you're, can you show us like well, an example of well, like, yeah, I don't know, just those let, let, yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. Let me let me try. So the thing is, when I okay, you know, like a chord progression like that, mm. I always try to picture a bass player first. Okay. Now my my brother, my old brother plays bass, and I always you know I love the bass sounding. You know, it's to me it's fantastic. And I always try to, you know, imagine, you know, like a bass line or something together. Okay. So my first thought is that. So I, you know, in this situation, I always try to fill the the spaces with, you know, some sort of a, 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 a bass line. You know, so in this progression, so G minor, B flat. I mean, we have step down, but D minor, C. So. Of course, it doesn't sound like a bass typical line, but uh, but it's all there. So, do you wow. have do you have any kind of an uh, uh, artist career planned for yourself? What would what would be your dream? Would it be to go out with a bass player and drummer, or a vocalist and a drummer? Like, uh -huh. what's your what's your dream as an artist? To, wow. to, to or you know, what are your dreams? You have several. Or? Perfect spot, actually, like this question because now you know I've. I've been working with, uh, as a session guitar player, I've been playing guitar for this artist named Tori Kelly. Right, yeah, I've seen, the, seen some of those videos. Yeah. Unbelievable singer, yeah. musician, yeah. she's complete, like she's awesome. And, uh, but at the same time, I also want to do like my own thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, it's it's kind of hard to say because I have this this guitar career career in, in terms of you know to play my tunes like my instrumental uh, uh, songs but at the same time I would love to to have some you know vocals on my my songs as well so yeah. I I would say that I would love to be a mix of like Derek Trucks because Derek Trucks he you know he uh, he has like the, the his band and he can do it, like his solo things mm -hmm. over it you know so a mix of Derek Trucks with Joey Satriani I would say you know like sure but a, a, a band with a vocalist and songs yeah exactly right. yeah, yeah where I can yeah. you know that makes sense Sure. Yeah. So that's, that's that's what I grew up loving is is bands that had singers and a guitar yeah. player who would step out and take a solo. So yeah. It's yeah. Essentially yeah. the same. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So okay. Well, yeah. well I mean, you you've gained so much ground like in the time that you've been here in three short years. You know, it's three years, right? That you've been yeah, here. three years. And it's amazing. So you've already got a great uh, a touring gig. Yeah. Session kind of gig, and then you're getting out there with the social media. It's interesting. Like I wrote a column in my is my monthly premier guitar column mm -hmm. called Tone Tips from the Road. This past month was titled Make Your Move and it was all about moving. I read that. Oh, did you? Yeah, I read it, yeah. Thank you. 
<laughs> which yeah. I, moving to a music center, which yeah. you did and which I did. Yeah. Uh, which you did too. And you've done as well now. Yeah. And for, but in the, you know three short years, it's kind of case in point of like, he's come here and got a great touring gig and stuff, and, and you're getting your name out there. I mean, I guess the social media thing could have happened with you in Brazil too, but there's going to be opportunities open to you here in LA that you oh, can yeah. find in Brazil, right? Oh, I mean, oh yeah, definitely. I mean, of course, with the source of, you know, the, the, the internet, you can do whatever you want, like, it doesn't matter the place. Yeah. But being here in LA, it makes a huge difference, especially, for example, if Tori Kelly, like, back then, if she, like, just like an example, like, somehow, like, she, she found me on social media and she was like, oh man, I would love to have this guy in my band. And yeah. if I was in Brazil, like this would never happen. You it's know? too difficult. Exactly. To, yeah. so, Which is exactly the point you made in your article. That's the right. So being the right you have to be there place. Physically present to, exactly. And also with the companies, the, like guitar companies, like battle companies, like they right. always ask me, like, "Hey, where are you based?" You know? Right. And the things would be like way more difficult if I was in Brazil, like to get in touch, you know, to make the the connections. Sure, and fit for clinics and things, they want you around. Oh, so that. Yeah, but, so just for a second to touch on your social media presence, uh, I think we can learn a lot from you on this. Um, Instagram has, I think, 185,000 followers or something like that at this point. Yeah. Is that right? Um, that's incredible. I mean... Uh, it, it's unbelievable. I, I, it's really amazing. Sometimes I'm like, dude, what is wrong with this people? <laughs> well, no, your, your, your videos, they just connect so, and what I was going to ask you is like, because there's such a connection going on there and it's organic and natural. Do you think it was um, mainly the, the, the videos you do of you performing your original music or you performing cover songs or what is it that attracts that level of, uh, of interest? So it's, it's interesting. I remember like when I start getting into the Instagram, I was like, man, I would love if they start, like, if they allowed the videos. So I was always on point with Instagram. Instagram was something, like, special to me. I was always on point with... From the beginning. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, and I was like, dude, if they allow the videos, like, this is, this can put me in a better place, you know, like, mm -hmm. in terms of, uh, you know, following me. And I was... Was it originally just photos? Is that right? Yes. Because I think when I started with Instagram, yeah. they were already doing yeah, videos. Yeah, short, short video. 15 yeah. seconds. It, exactly. Yeah. So, the, yeah. so when they started with the 15 seconds, 15 second video, I was like, okay, so now it's time to, to put all my ideas, I mean, to put my ideas in 15 seconds. Right, right, right. So that's what I try to do. I was like, you know, <laughs> that's kind of weird. I know, but... It used to be a three-minute pop song. And <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It was pretty yeah. much like that. And then I, I was like, okay, so what should I do? Oh, but before that, the, the problem was, like, the first option of Instagram, like, you couldn't, like, uh, how can I say that? Like, import... Uh, a, a video that oh, you... Oh, right. So how do you get... Yeah, right. So like Snapchat. Live right there. Yeah, yeah right. so... Yeah. I remember in the first... Like, at first it was bad. I was like, oh, man, I still cannot do my thing. Right, right. But after that, after all those upgrades and stuff, I I was like, okay, so now is the chance to, to do uh, what I would love to do. Mm -hmm. And then that's how I, I start, like working on that, you know, to make, to make like melodies shorter, everything hmm. shorter, just to <laughs> have that thing. You know? Amazing. You, so, you, you use the medium and like you, you sort of worked within the parameters. Exactly. You have a lot of YouTube views on your videos uh, on YouTube. Um, and so that's probably the place where you were able to stretch out. Yes. Right? So that's what I try to do. Like when uh, the 15 second showed up, I was like, I'm gonna just make you know crop the video and then tell them that they can check it out yeah. on YouTube oh, yeah. the the, the, yeah. the video and the whole perfect, video. Yeah. Yeah. But in the beginning it was like that and it was it was really like I think this is just my opinion but I 
the thing about Instagram is to keep uploading. Steady, okay. steady uh, stream of uploads. Are you talking about every day or not every, every day, twice but a week, like, or? but like to have like a like a, a, a rhythm. Okay, I see. A rhythm yeah. of posting, you know, like it doesn't need. To, I think you guys both do that. I really, you do. know, like he, he you. Yeah. I do it. Yeah, I do it now. Yeah. Yeah. Like it cannot be like it, of course over posting is always bad, but uh, like to have like so that's what I'm doing now. I'm like trying to post like a video once a week, you know. Uh, that's a relief. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a doable. That's a doable uh, goal, right? Yeah. yeah, once a week. Yeah, yeah. That's about what I, I do. One or two a week, and then I usually do a photo or two a day, that kind of thing. That yeah. seems to work. For, uh, but it's incredible when I started noticing the number of views those videos get. Yeah. Um, it, it, I guess it's just because it's easy. I mean, on a phone to watch something and people are scrolling through, and it's you know, it's 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 a great format to reach people. But I, I couldn't believe when you upload a video and you look back a few hours later and it's got yeah. a few thousand views. Or I know. That was fast. Two months ago, I I was in South Korea. Mm -hmm. This was like my my first guitar clinic ever. Mm. It was amazing. I was super impressed because I wasn't expecting the feedback. So, like now is the time to see like, like the the Instagram feedback. You know, like the social media, like making it real mm -hmm. to me. You know. Wow. Yeah, that must be you fascinating. Know? So exactly. Yeah. So, and I remember when I, when the the, the company. Uh, talk to me about like hey man do you want to do this clinic here in South Korea and I was like whoa South Korea was I, it for sir yes you did for okay sir guitars you know, probably display our sir guitar his friend Tom <laughs> <laughs> He's a good, that's right they are good friends yeah, <laughs> yeah. they are yeah but yeah it was such great experience it was my first guitar clinic ever and uh, I wasn't expecting, like, it's a great turnout. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I saw a photo. A pretty big crowd. It was like around oh, yeah. five hundred people. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow! Yeah. For a clinic, it's fantastic. Exactly. Yeah, that's amazing. It's like a root, like a like a gig. Yeah. Dude, it was like that, and yeah. like that's the point. I was expecting, you know, like those in my clinics. You know, like everybody's sitting down, and you're just like in a chair and playing and. You have the question and answer yeah. going on, and that's it. But wow, I got there and they prepared like all this ceremony, and wow. Wow. it was wow. crazy. And then like they announced my name, and the guys were like crazy, and I was like, wow. You got to see the power of the Instagram translated into exactly real people. <laughs> exactly, and Amazing. this is. This is when I realized that well, the social media has a, like huge power if you know how to use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did that all yourself without the help of a of a record company or a uh, yeah, right. I mean, it's obviously you know with the help of Sir and some promotions. Oh yeah, like no, that, definitely. You, you built your presence yeah, from yeah. square one that made it possible for you to even get involved with these guys and get your name out there and then attract all those people. That's a really amazing, powerful thing that you did. Yeah, I mean, it's it's awesome. And uh, now I'm, I'm, that's what I'm I'm doing recently. I, I'm going tomorrow to Brazil. Oh, another clinic? Yeah. Oh, cool. I'll be doing like seven to eight clinics in Brazil. Wow. And, you know, it's my home country, so I'm, I'm great. Now I don't need to speak a different language, so it's gonna be easier, definitely. Are you getting yeah. home cool. too? Yeah, this yeah. time, yeah, I'm gonna have a chance to to see my my, my friends and family. But uh, yeah, it's been it's been great, and I and to me, I would love to keep doing this clinic. It's so nice, especially like the the to interact with with the crowd, you know, yeah. and the fact that he, like, 99% of them are guitar players. Sure. So, it is tough because they're, like, they're gonna be there to, to 
to learn something from you and at the same at the same time they're gonna be like they they notice when you play a bad note you know right or, or when you're like oh man he's rushing or something like that you know? <laughs> yeah. but uh but at the same time it's it's challenging you know i i, I think challenges are good uh-huh so you know you can increase your technique you can you know have your playing or on point you know those things so this is actually really cool but besides that you know to try to uh, um, to say something good mm -hmm. to the crowd where you know they can absorb and be like okay I got it you know yeah well especially going home to Brazil that's gotta be inspiring yeah here you are out doing all this great work now you can go home and Exactly. You know, hang with the folks from where you're from, and that, that's got to be really special for them. Oh, yeah, and if you can help them fulfill their dreams, yeah. maybe it's just some local gigs, or maybe it's making records, or maybe it's coming here and doing what we all did. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's a very gratifying thing. Absolutely, helping people. Yeah. yeah. Really powerful. That's so, what's the format thing. of your clinics like? So, I've always wondered that. Like, how do you, you know, so you got to fill up an hour, an hour and a half. Yes. Um, do, you, do you have a structure that you like to? kind of stick to so my plan in Brazil this is Brazil special especially uh, so I'm gonna play probably a few songs in the beginning three or four mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna share my story like I'm gonna say because I mean it, I don't want to share the story here because it's gonna be too long but I you know I almost decided to quit guitar when I was 18. We need to hear about that. But yeah, tell us about that. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Why? So I was in high school, mm -hmm. and the high school in Brazil is three years. Yeah. And uh, I was in the in the in the beginning. Uh, I mean, in the end of the the second year of high school, and this is when you have to choose what to do. You know, it's like. A, that period is really, really important. Mm. And I was like, okay, what should I do? You know, what should I go for? And music was always my passion, but at the same time, I was kind of worried, you know? Mm. And the fact that I don't have like any family members associated with music, mm -hmm. so that becomes, way harder you know even though my my mom always supported me mm. my dad was a little harder but uh, he's like way more conservative but you know you have that thing you have like a lot of you know questions and yeah. here and that so anyway and I was I was like okay should I pick you know should I become a musician or a doctor Mm. So those two things. So yeah, so I was exactly and do you have to decide that in high school in Brazil? Ex I know. <laughs> Big decisions. I mean, I remember going through a similar decision, you know, at like 17 or 18 and it's tough in some in like Canada it's the same way or I mean, I I, I don't know. I didn't mm, it, it's not that. Like, it's that you're yeah. getting to the end of high school, I think yeah. just in general and everybody's yeah. like, what am I do I'm gonna go to college and I was going through that my dad my, my folks were generally really supportive but having a music career wasn't really something that they could see yeah. for me they mm. thought it was you know same. and I remember my, my pop yeah, kind of talking me into I thought I was gonna to go to college locally and, yeah. and I went to my music teacher this was a minute of for me it was a minute of kind of waffling on the music thing because I had I had really decided to move to LA when I was 14 I wanted to go to MI and that was a decision I made when I was 14, but by the time I was 17, I was waffling a little bit on that. And like, oh, should I, maybe I should just kind of stay in town and go to college and, you know, and then think about going to L.A., and at which point it probably would have never happened. But I went to my guitar teacher at the time that was a really strong, important mentor in my musical life, and I told him about this, you know, and he said, you know, you're, you're really good at this, and you should really reconsider because I think that you could have a real shot at, at uh, and whatever he said to me, you know, he just yeah. said it in such a way that I, I reconsidered awesome. and then I did music, I moved here and I went to MI and all that. But I know it's difficult at that age, right? Like 17 or 18. Exactly. I was 16. I was, dang. 
Yeah, like, is it possible? So a guy the other day, Mike Kimmel, said to me, I was doing a podcast the other day, um, or is it, it was the uh, EVH tone gu guitar show that happens, you know, where everybody geeks out about Eddie Van Halen and his guitar tone. And Mike Kimmel is a guy that's really great at doing that style of playing stuff. He was a guest on the show the other day. And he said something I thought was really, really profound. He said, um, if you choose to do with your life something that you don't love, that's going to be hard. He said, if you choose to play guitar, that's going to be hard too. It's a hard path, yes. you know, but you love it. So you can choose to do something you don't love, and that's going to be hard in its own way. So why not choose something you love? <laughs> Go that route. That's it's good going to be difficult yeah. either way. You know? And the thing is, you can try it until you're 25, and still, you know, you got you have a lot of time. If you want to quit when you're 25, yeah, quit then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Give it a shot. Yeah. You know? yeah. 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 Well, yeah. it's, we're really happy that you decided to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So was there like a, a moment when you were going to become a doctor? I mean, did you, did you seriously consider becoming, becoming a doctor instead? It's, so this was like my plan B, almost A. I mean, music was ours, but like, but almost became a, like a priority because I was kind of frustrated. I got an offer, I mean, I, like a really well-known uh, music produ producer in Brazil invited me to move to Sao Paulo, a uh, big city in Brazil, to work uh, for him and be part of a band. And uh, my parents, this, I mean, they recommended me to not go. So that kind of like frustrated me. Mm. I felt like really upset. I was, I thought it, that was like my chance. Mm. That was like my, you know, you know, like in music, you you always think, oh man, I think this is, this is the moment. Yeah. Because like yeah. things like change so yeah. easily, yeah. Mm -hmm. and so fast. So I thought I was like, hey, I think that's my chance. I I gotta take it. But my parents were like. No, I I don't think this is the good the good thing, mm. and like uh, I uh, I mean this is my point, and I always like put this, you know, uh, inside of me that I always gonna listen to my my parents' voice, so it doesn't matter what they they say. I'm just gonna be like okay, you know, but especially when I was sixteen. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So even though I felt like so upset, I was like, okay, if you guys are not feeling comfortable with this, so I'm, I'm gonna respect you guys and I'm gonna obey this. You know, I'm gonna follow you, your, your, what you're, you're telling me. So mm -hmm. I decided to not take it, and this was like so hard to me that I, that I. So this is when I. I thought that I okay, it's time to quit music, and just like works and study really, really hard to become a doctor. Wow! Know? So what happened next to obviously change that decision? Yeah. So the thing that happened right after I denied that um, a guitar contest happened in the social media. Oh, guitar contest. Okay. Yeah, in Brazil, mm -hmm. and. Uh, like a really nice friend and he he's also a guitar player he called me and he was like hey man I know you kind of upset but you should give a last try <laughs> and just wow. make a video and be part of the con the contest you know just see what's up so I did that and I upload the video in the very last day you know like the deadline <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I got picked and at the end of the story, I, I won the contest. <laughs> yeah, this was like 2010, and uh, I think like around 500 guitar players, four, 450 guitar players right. subscribed for that, and I, I was the one. I don't want to say like the first place, but I mean, like for this contest, I got the first place. And uh, that kind of gave me way more hope wow. to change my mind and go back and see that that music is gonna be my path.
path. Wow. You know? Yeah, I, I had a really hard time at a certain point too. I started at age 12 and my parents fought me until I was 19. They finally gave up when I was 19 and they realized that I, I, I had to do something and I was really into this. Uh -huh. yeah. But I was in Albuquerque, New Mexico at age 19, just completely depressed because I thought I was playing bars. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, what do I do? And I moved here and I didn't care what the results were. If I could just play anywhere with anybody in LA, that's all I cared about. And when I got here, there was a lot of musicians to work with and I started working pretty quickly. But it really came out of being completely depressed in, you know, in a small town right. with nowhere else to go, yeah. you know? It kind of makes isolation. sense in a way, I mean, for for people's parents and they don't know this business and you're in a different... Yeah. They, 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 they're just they can't imagine to, they can't a imagine. life in this business. They can't imagine. Yeah, whereas, you know, for me it was always like I'd see the guy on TV and go, well, why can't, you know, one day he's not going to be doing it anymore, why don't I do it? Yeah. <laughs> and it was that really naive, you know, like, well, yeah. all you got to do is be like, what he's doing, be the best guy in the room, yeah. get up and do it, you know, and yeah. so that was always kind of my driving thing. But I, I do understand it in a way, they're just trying to do the right thing by yeah. telling you that. Oh, to protect you. Yeah, yes. go to college and have a, yeah. and uh, I yeah, I guess it's that that turning point where you're becoming an adult from becoming an adolescent, and you you, you like you you know you want to listen to your parents and you trust them. I was the same way with my folks. You yeah. know, I, I, I trusted them and their opinion and really respected them. But you you're also becoming an adult and fighting like that. Wait, wait a minute, maybe they don't know everything just because they're my <laughs> yeah. parents. Yeah, you know? yeah. And tr kind of and so it took you winning the contest. You know, I mean over. 500 of the players and stuff to go, wait a second here, right? Like, I'm pretty good at this. <laughs> like, <laughs> without, sound, like, without sounding ego now, you had to say to yourself, like, yeah. I've got something special here. Exactly. But the other thing is, in any artistic endeavor, there are moments that are so low, yeah. you don't even know how you're going to get through them. It right, that's happens, true. You know? That's true. Right. Well, that and that sort of harkens back to the do something you love, because that's yeah. what's going to get you through, right? Yeah. Because you love it so much that it's like, okay, I'm starving and I'm sitting in a studio apartment with like no yeah. furniture and yeah. <laughs> I'm eating top ramen but I'm playing my guitar. Yeah. It's like Jimmy said, that's okay, I still got my guitar, right? <laughs> you know. uh, How do they feel now? Oh, oh my gosh. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. Like it's like especially my father, like his his like I don't know, like he keeps I think he's the biggest stalker. <laughs> Your Never biggest fan. <laughs> exactly on my social media. No, that's like that was kind of weird. Actually, I have a a, a, a story about it. Uh, I was I had to use his computer, and you know when you open the Safari and you're gonna and you check like the favorites, the, the websites, you know, and like at least like five of the pages like were my social media stuff, and I was like, oh my gosh, you keep watching my things and he was like yeah of course you're my son and I was like yeah but this is kind of weird and he was like come on but yeah <laughs> you know like my, my, my father like I mean both they're like really really happy now especially with all those things you know doing clinics overseas and yeah, yeah. you know it's it's great man and now they have nothing to complain I mean they miss me but <laughs> that's the only thing you know. Tell us a little bit about um, the guitar that you brought today, and about the guitars that you play in general. Like, do you, do you play all kinds of different? I know you you have a lot of different Sir guitars. And yeah, playing them a lot. Do you, do you mainly play their guitars, or do you use uh, different instruments? Oh, I, I mean, Sir guitars are definitely my my main guitars, especially this one. What's the, what's this one all about? Looks like they're really similar to mine. Yeah, so. I think yeah, it's the same, but yours is probably. The, the heavy antique, I mean the extreme antique, I think, or no? You know, I, th I think this guitar, it, it is an antique, but I've actually beat it up a lot. Um, oh, okay. So it's gotten really yellow and stuff just over the yeah. years. But these are... Uh, it looks awesome. Yeah, they're great. It's, that's really beautiful as well. Yeah. Um, but um, I noticed you've got the roasted neck on this yes, guitar. Yes, it has a roasted and uh, that's, neck. that's a cool thing. It I is a... It keep the necks really stable. Yeah, this is What a, does that mean, roasted? They actually put them in like a kiln or some oh. sort of like, uh, and it actually dries them out. They look like, so that's why they're kind of yeah, dark. Like it's made oh, yeah. You know? But it takes a lot of the, uh, the moisture out, and supposedly it kind of uh, makes them more stable and also uh, sound 
really resonant and stuff just because all that you know wood is like I don't really understand it. And like a vintage guitar, there's no more moisture left. I mean, vintage exactly. guitars just get drier, and drier, drier, yeah. and drier, and drier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and like uh, this guitar is it's really good. I I totally feel like that's the coolest thing about Sir guitars to me. They are so comfortable that to me it's like yeah. I don't know. It's just too good. They're really, really comfortable to play. Yeah. Do you use their their pickups as well? You use I know you've got my humbucker yeah. bridge on this one, right? It's the so Thornbucker guys. What, <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. What about this the single coil? Uh, they are MLs. MLs, cool. Michael on those signature. Yeah. And they're great. I honestly prefer these ones because it has I don't know. They're a little darker. A little darker, yeah. Yeah, I, I would say that. Yeah, exactly, yeah. and. Especially, like, I love playing in this position. Okay. So, so I can, I don't know, it doesn't bother me that much, you know, I don't have to take the tone, the tone too down. much. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like that, you know, I, I don't know, it's just, it fits really and that's well. That's number two position, right? With, the yeah, two, the the number two, two position. Together. Yeah. yeah, it fits really well with my, with the sound I've been looking for, you know, so I... I, I, I noticed it. you use that position quite a bit yeah. in your videos, yeah, it's really cool. And now I'm trying to get more into this, the, uh, the middle, with this, yeah, the middle, to get like the funky, but it's, uh, I'm, I'm trying, it's cool, but yeah, the, the, the second position is, uh, I don't know, it's just, I, I, I like it, I really like it. Yeah. But yeah. Beautiful so this is the the classic. I also have uh, another classic, but it's a Fiesta Red. Mm. And I do have a classic T. Oh, classic T. Yeah. And I got an Alt T Pro. Alt T Pro. Yeah. Right. The, it's a, the Neo Tally that they they're making now. A semi hollow Tally, right? Yes. So, exactly. Yeah. Have you tried that? I haven't yet, but I really want to try one. I, they're using the, my pickups in that one as well. I don't want it to sound like I can't yeah, exactly. my, my pickups. So oh, it's, yeah. it's got two humbuckers in it. It looks, I really want to try one because I've always wanted a, a, like a Tele Custom style guitar yeah. or, or, or a Tele Thin Line style guitar that has, you know. Uh, yeah, a hollow side. The, the, yeah, that has the, 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 yeah. the hollow thing going on, so i got to check that out. Is that pickup arrangement? I find the hum single single pickup arrangement is so like the most versatile. Yeah, and I, I first know. saw it on a Michael Landau guitar when I first moved here, uh -huh. and I was, I think I was, might have been 1981 or 1980, Yeah. and I stared at him and I thought, oh, that's amazing, you put a humbug and pick it. And of course, Eddie Van Halen had already started, you know, doing that in a Strat. Mm -hmm. Right. But I have to agree, it's, it, I keep coming back to it also, if you're doing a gig, yeah. there's no better combination than that. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. You've yeah. got to cover a lot of ground yeah. on one guitar. Yeah. So true. Yeah. You, yeah. You don't, you're not frustrated because you can get all the, the clean stuff. Mm -hmm. You can get, you know, I'm really attached to the neck pickup on a strap for the Hendrix kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then on my, uh, I have a couple of guitars like that. On one of them, I can split the humbucker and actually the split humbucker it actually sounds pretty single coily. So sounds that pretty good. Too, you know? Yeah. yeah. I do. Um, so this will, this will split. Um, Split, which is cool, but when I hit the bridge, I can pull this, and that's actually parallel. Now, so it puts the humbucker in parallel, and I really dig that yeah. sound almost more than a split humbucker. First of all, it stays quiet, yeah. it's still humbucking, but right. second of yeah. all, it has a um, really nice with the other sing with the with the singles. That's the key too, right? Back in the early days, there was not any particular balance between that humbucker and these pickups, but now right. they've got all that worked out because the humbuckers are weaker and they sound better. Yeah. It used to be yeah. there with like these really high output humbuckers in the bridge position. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. I like the, these yeah. these pickups are not hot. I mean yeah. this one and the one you've got in there. They're they're more like PA off strength. And then you can yeah. always just back them down into the guitar yeah. and get less volume. But but yeah I think that parallel thing on the that's why kind of put that on there. The Andy Wood thing, another Sir guy, mm -hmm. he was really into the, the, yeah. the humbuckers in parallel, so I tried it and I was like, oh, that's really cool. Sounds that really sounds, cool. sounds fantastic. Yeah. Useful. That's awesome. What pickups 
I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know what, what they are, but Tom makes his own pickups, so oh. uh, we'll leave it to, you know, it'll be a comment that will have to be answered. <laughs> That's a fun guitar, though, it's like Jazz Master, right? Yeah, it's, he calls it the Raven. It's pretty versatile, too. He always notices, I do like to have it, I, I end up using, even with humbuckers, I use the middle position a lot, just because I like the clarity of I'm kind of the last guy to know what's in a guitar. I'm trying to get better at it, but even if you tell me what the pickups are, I end up forgetting. Uh, <laughs> I gotta confess, I'm really, really bad at that too. Bad at remembering the technical stuff. Oh uh, yeah. But this is a Raven, and Tom did make the pickups, so that okay. I know. Yeah, that's cool. Cool, beautiful guitar. Uh, have you done the get the gear spotlight with Sir? Um, yeah, I kind of. I actually did one of the very first ones. Yeah. I was playing with Melissa Etheridge. So. I did one, and it was great. They came out to a gig, and uh, and I, back then I was using a combination of the SL sixty eight amp, which is like mm. an old plexi, and the Jim Kelly for my clean sounds. Oh, and I sick. really loved the rig I had going, and it was a really cool combination of their amps, and very sort of vintage, you know. Like a, Kelly sounds like a big, beautiful Fender at lower, lower settings, big, clean, wonderful, mm -hmm. great with pedals. Yeah. And then the SL68 just for the kind of balls out, you know. Yeah. Did you do? Did you do one with that? Yeah. So that's with what Tori happened. Or? Yeah, it was like they came to uh, Tori Kelly's gig. Oh, cool. And they asked me to tell about the products, you know, about the, the Sur guitars and the Sur amps and pedals. You're like, I don't know. And it was like, these, uh, hey guys, on. I need, I need help. <laughs> like, I don't remember the specs. I'm sorry. You're like, I've been too busy <laughs> yeah. writing beautiful songs. Oh no, and learning no, how to play it, beautiful licks. Oh <laughs> no, man, but I, I, I need to get better at that too, like, to know about my, my guitars. But anyway, it's well, what, just, I don't know. I, I think you're doing just fine. You know, <laughs> all that stuff up to other people and just spend just more time. Just go on the website. Check it. Yeah. <laughs> So I just do what I do, I just apologize all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. But yeah, it's that's that's cool. So I noticed when we were jamming, um, I gotta ask you about this. You 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 do some really cool funky kind of improv stuff in your soloing. And yeah. maybe you can show us like I don't know. Well like you just kind of without even thinking about it, you go into like super cool syncopated kind of like you know. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I, well, it's it's it's. Well, let me try. Ain't even gonna try. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, maybe you can show us how to like. I don't know. Yes, yeah, that. Just one that. thing. One thing. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. So let let me. Uh, oh, it's more like. Oh, I see. super cool harmonic stuff so tapping and also natural harmonics and all that yeah as uh, I don't know I'm just like a big fan of natural harmonics I remember when I first time I learned how to like use open tunings mm. I was so like dude 
that's so beautiful and wow. Yeah. So I was uh, I always try to use this uh, on my plane. So instead of playing, let's just use an, exa an example here, like so instead of playing like the, the you know like the, the regular notes, I prefer to use like a harmonics that when you can. Yeah, yeah, when yeah, when I can, I can yeah, when yeah. I have the chance, yeah. you know. And and do you also tap or oh that's good, okay. Yeah, yeah, you know, like this. <laughs> And you also use a lot of sixths. Oh yeah, that a lot. Double stops, but I love the way. That's yeah, that's I I try to use that with you know. Some, uh, yeah, yeah, more like. Wow. Okay, what's happening there? Because you're sliding up a half step. But it's like barely, you know. Single note stuff. Do you do a lot of that same sort of sliding? Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. Well, that your position shift there. You can, like switch yeah. that. Wow. So I've never seen anybody do that. It's more like a. Oh yeah. Okay. Just you bring your index finger up to where. There you go. But I actually like I play like here, so but it's like, kind of nice. So. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, it has that. Man, I've never seen anybody do that. inspired me to use this was actually uh, Dale Turner. Do you know Dale? He's a teacher. He's a teacher at MI. Oh, no, I don't. He has this class named uh, Jimi Hendrix. I forgot the name of the class. Oh my gosh. Jimi Hendrix Rhythm, uh, something like that. And he, he tells, it's all about little stops. And I remember when he used this, you know, I was like, wow, I should get this, you know, I should yeah. work on that. So you turned it into your own thing. And, uh, yeah, I just... You, I know. you know, you also do something that I do, I, I will say that you do it better, but um, you use one finger to lead your hand into a different position as you're playing phrases. Like, something I've always done, and I... I, I Either a finger going up to lead into the new phrase or one going down. Yeah, but like this is more like a I don't know, I, I remember listening to I mean watching the John Mayer's video and he did something like you know, like that typical blues thing. You know that. Yeah. So I yeah. saw that. I was like, oh, what? You know, how can I? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. That's yeah. That's, that's, like, that's yeah. yeah. So it's a two-string. traveling all over the neck, but 
the phrase never stops. That's what I like about it. Sorry, it's kind of weird to me to explain this, but yeah. No, it's okay. Um, do you have like influences you can talk about, or would you rather not? Talk about oh no, 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 there's. It's not a problem to me. Definitely not. Who are some of your your favorite guitarists? That you... So, well, favorite, like just one. Uh, but I mean, top three. Top three. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Joe Mayer was. Definitely the guy who changed my mind, because before that I was all about like progressive metal. Ah, I saw a film of you doing that, and I was like, "Oh, he did yeah, that." Yeah, you know, I was like, right. yes, right. like I was like yeah. this pretty huge fan of John Petrucci. Yeah, it was pretty. Fast. Like the the, <laughs> the the like the yeah. I remember a friend of mine, a drummer. He introduced me to Dream Theater's music, and I was like. Dude, this is impressive, you know. I was probably like 13, 12 years old. Yeah. So from 12 years old to like 16 years old, like during this four years, I was like, I like shredding and doing, like trying to, you know, work on my alternate picking and velocity. Yeah. And then I, I, a friend of mine brought this DVD to my place, which was uh, the, what's the name of that, uh, the John Mayer, and uh, what's the name of that DVD name, I forgot. Red the Lightest. Red the Lightest, yeah, exactly. And I, when I saw that, I was like, whoa. You know, Something changed. You yeah, saw I saw that, and like, he was playing like so tasty, and you know, it's such beautiful vocabulary. Mm. And and back then, this is actually a, a different thing. Like I didn't know like Jimi Hendrix, Sid Ray Vaughan, like all the, the the old school, like the vintage like blues rock right. guys. And I saw like you know John Merrick playing like those. And I was like, dude, this is so cool. I I and I yeah. I wasn't that familiar with this type of guitar playing. So I was like, man, I, I should I should start working on that too. You know? He's a he was a really great bridge, I think, for a lot of kids yes. to the older yes. players. Yeah. And, you know, just like Stevie Ray Vaughan was yeah. for many people than yeah. uh, for me, certainly, you know, as oh, yeah. somebody new and current. You know. Especially in this generation, I think. Yeah. yeah. And uh yeah, John Mayer is definitely my top three. Mm. And uh, well, I've been listening. I've I've been listening a lot. Uh, I don't know if you guys know uh, the guy who plays for Snark Puppy. Oh, Snark. oh yeah, of course, Mark. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mark. And I. Yeah. And Mark was definitely. I Mark remember, is a Letary. Is that how you pronounce it? Letary. I don't know yeah. how to say his name. Yeah. Right. But his last name. But uh, like he's unbelievable okay. because Incredible. because. Like this is actually like uh, how I start getting into this, you know, like R and B. He just posted thing. a video. Did you see the post? The post he did like a few days ago of him playing. It's a funk rhythm. That's oh yeah, I saw that. The economy. Yeah. I, I want to put it on my website because I want to wow. show people this piece. Dude, of I gotta music. check it out. Yeah, that's it's awesome. It's, he reminds me of you a little in the, the, the economy of what he does. He never moves too much with his hands, and all this stuff's happening, but it's because his hands are, mm. are uh, only moving as much as they need to to get the job done. Cool. I'm going to see that. No, yeah. yeah he's he's going to be so happy. Yeah, yeah Marcus. <laughs> I know him. I've never <laughs> met him. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Well. But he's awesome, and I remember when I, because w- when I got this Story Kelly gig, I... I wasn't familiar with the R&B music, so I was like, dude, what should I do with, you know, my guitar position, you know? Right. So I, so I started listening more, you know, uh, John Mayer and Mark Lettieri. That's interesting, so you dug into Dan their Joe. playing to kind of get some more vocabulary yeah. to, to use on the gig. Oh yeah, definitely, because I, okay. I didn't know, like I, I, I didn't grow up grow up listening to R and B music. Okay. So right. I, I, yeah. I but you have an innate, incredible sense of rhythm that 
I mean, yeah. you're very super groovy and funky, so it's like that was in there from somewhere, you know, oh. it seems like. But that was sort of <laughs> true for me also, because when I moved here, I was not a good rhythm player, and I mm -hmm. literally was on the job training. I Is literally right? learned to play rhythm guitar in, on the gigs. On the gigs, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And it took me like 10 years to mm -hmm. do Oh, it come a on. Now. I could play lead, but yeah. it took me a while to, to, to get rhythm chops going. And, and, and the last guy who changed my mind I mean, who like actually like had so many things to me in the guitar perspective was Brad Paisley. Brad Paisley. Oh, oh so yeah. Brad yeah. and right. yeah, okay. Mark as like a new yeah. guy and John Mayer. Like cool. these three guys, like to me. Have you ever met Brad Paisley? No. I'm sure you will. I'm sure I'll have, have you up on stage probably at some point. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. man, I would freak out. Like, Brad is. It was actually He's my awesome. first my first show in LA. I mean, in a uh, in California, it was Brad Paisley's concert. Wow. It was such a great experience. I've never seen him live. I bet I bet it's just it's great. I don't know. The country guitar playing is so special to me. Yeah. Like even though I don't have that that thing, but the way how they play the phrases. Also, I really appreciate how like. They use like the open string technique. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. To me, like yeah. that is. For like high cascading sort of. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that kind of goes with your harmonic. Like, yeah. Similar with cascading sort of like. Tone exactly. Yeah. Also, the tone, to me, like they're my favorite. Yeah, Nashville is guitar heaven at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with guys, and yeah. it's interesting because guys like. Uh, like Brad and Keith Urban is fantastic, yeah, I yeah. think, and they keep it at Keith. the forefront. The guitar is yeah. at the forefront, yeah. of the, and, and yet it's hit songs and stuff, which is really cool. Yeah. I gotta ask about, did did you play on the original Crowded House, uh, Don't, what's the song Don't called? Don't Dream It's Over, yeah, I did. Yeah. And no was, way. I did, yeah. And he does this beautiful version. Yeah, yeah and I, I did not, Neil's, but this is Neil's part. Yeah. Neil Finn, I have a demo somewhere of him playing wow. that part on this demo. But I did yeah. all these strat, these kind of, yeah. Wayne Bar Stratfields throughout. That's me no on the second way. part. But we I knew you that like that because yeah. you have this. He plays this gorgeous version of that song yeah. on YouTube. Oh my goodness! Yeah. He, wow, this <laughs> yeah, is so awesome, man. <laughs> Seriously, this is my favorite song ever. Wow! Yeah, it's. Cool. I was lucky I got to play it. I got a lot of work from that because it was the songwriter's favorite song for a few years after it came out. Yeah. And uh, when people found out I played on it, I got a lot of demos with songwriters. Wow! wow. I made my awesome. living doing. Song demos for songwriters, and what got me a lot of those demos was playing on that song. Well, it's a beautiful, beautiful song. I always love that song, and um, and I love your version of it, your take on it too. So we should we should put the link to to your video um, in the in the description yeah. for this video, so people can check it out. Because this guy was just watching it this morning. It's gorgeous. And this is also like can be like an advice for like a social media thing. Mm. Like covers are always a good thing. Right. Mm. I built my YouTube channel on covers. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it's smaller than, no, you no, know, come on. but it's, yeah, I agree, I agree. Yeah, it people does see, help. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I just, songs are familiar with friends. Yeah. yeah, like, a week ago, I posted, a, a, like, I was just, like, messing around with that song, over that song, um, Put Your Records On. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, dude, it was, like, this, you know, like, in one day, I got, like, a, Hundred thousand views on Instagram, just like that's video. amazing. You know, wow. it's like, that's like it, it, it's, how does it go? Do you remember? It's crazy. Do you remember the part at all? I don't. Want to oh, the of uh, uh, don't dream is over or the either of them actually. Oh, I. Well, it's cool if you don't. I think don't dream is over. It, it will be a little easier to me to play. Try to use like double stops. The way you play, I went to a Tommy Emmanuel seminar one night. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like two or three hours long, and yeah. I got to sit kind of right in the front row. And the glow from that didn't last as long as it should have, but it lasted through the next day. And I remember just picking up the guitar 
And it seemed like the possibilities were endless and that my hands could move anywhere and do anything. Uh, and I kind of get that from you. It's you're, you're breaking me out of this kind of limited view that I have of the guitar. Yeah. You, know, you can really do anything. Yeah. You know? it's, it's, yeah. So you're, you're, it's, you're a good influence on everybody, I think, because of... Everywhere. Well, you're just so damn musical, you know. I, I know I'm sitting here and just can't keep, yeah. we keep complimenting you, but you really have yeah. a special thing that you do that's really just that. And that's, Thanks, that, man. I think, is why your social thing is growing to because people just want to sit and, I mean, people respond to real music. A lot of people down on music these days and pop music and they complain about the VMAs or the whatever and it's just all crap out there. But this guy, it's like, look at what he's doing. Well, you know, you're easy to do. find, too. It's yeah. like within five minutes we could find you know, tons of amazing performances by you. And that's that, right. That's so, go, just go find it. It's, it's and it's, the organic quality, how fast it grows yeah. in your, is just yeah. because people respond. I believe people want to hear great music. Yeah. You know? They respond yeah. to it. It's yeah. just when they, they, they can respect and appreciate good art. Yeah, I mean, we exist outside the mainstream now. And it's actually fine with me at this point. But do we? Because he's got 185... Well, that, yeah, it's, a, it's a paradox because that maybe is the that's the, maybe that is the main. You're right. You know, yeah. reaching people directly and it's beautiful. It's the yeah. beautiful thing that's yeah. happened in the music business and with technology. Yeah. I mean, I know it's like people stealing music and all that stuff. It's a drag, but it's like the beautiful thing that's happened is you can do make the, the, one of these beautiful covers or your own music and upload it the same day. And boom. Like you said, 100,000 yeah. views in one yeah. day. Yeah. 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 It's the, exceptional. The Don't Dream It's Over uh, it got like more uh, feedback on Facebook mm. in two days. got a million views. Oh my God. It, wow, even cool. like Crowded House, they shared the video. Crowded House oh, shared the video. Else. Andy yeah. McKee, the, the, the acoustic guitar player. Okay. I, for, I don't know if I say this right, like his last name. Don't, Andy familiar. McKee. Okay. Oh man, he's insane. Oh. And you know, all those those people, and I was like, wow, that's that's impressive. You and, mean Andy McKee? Yeah, yeah Andy yeah. McKee. Oh, Andy, yeah. you know Andy McKee. Yeah. <clears throat> and, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's... I don't know, you've got to be smart too. It's always, you know, like, when I say covers, I mean, it's, I don't know, like, my, my, my personal choice is more like a throwback thing. Mm -hmm. you know? That's how I always felt too, that if I did something that was from a prior generation, I was more safe. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of Hendrix stuff on YouTube, but I wouldn't have felt comfortable doing a John Mayer song because he's a contemporary. Mm -hmm. And that, that may be what you're saying. Right? Yeah, no, yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, it's that crowded house right. song is part of history at this point. Exactly. It's, so it's yeah. Well, and you're maybe doing yeah. you're doing crowded house of service because you're maybe introducing a beautiful song to some folks that wouldn't hear it otherwise, right? Yeah. Like some younger people or something like, what is he playing? And yeah. They'll back and they'll check out the original. Yeah, exactly. Which is really special. So it's good for them too. And it was crazy. I was like, I was in Brazil, mm. driving the car. And the songs start playing, the Drum Dream It's Over song start playing on the radio. And I was like, man, this song's so gorgeous. I like, yeah. look, I, and I, it's been like a while that since last time I, I heard the song, I was like, dude, I should just play this song, you know? Cool. Good. And I start, you know, the arrangement flowed really well, and I was like, eh. Worked out. I should yeah. post that. You did the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so thanks for checking out the Tim and Pete show this time. Mateos, you can find him anywhere, everywhere. Mateos Asado, yes. thank you for joining us. Thank you, guys. So wonderful, man. Yeah. And thanks for all the insight. Wonderful story about uh, how you almost quit but didn't. And wow, we're really happy that you did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. Hopefully come back soon yeah we'll have yeah. you back and check out the Tim and Pete website it's up and running now all of the episodes are all lined up there for easy viewing yeah. right on our website which is timandpeteguitarshow.com and we'll have Mateos links there for you too Let's see. take care over now yeah yeah beautiful that was great